Have you ever noticed how things like FBX files can have all these subfiles attached to them? Each one of these has their own comp sets of components with it, mesh renderers, filters, transforms, and other things. This is something we can add ourselves. We're going to use this command, asset database, add object to asset. And for whatever reason, every time that I end up coming across a point where I need to create this again, I can't remember the command and I search Google for it. I search Bing for it. I search other things for it. I talk to chat GPT or other AI tools and every single one of them is like, no, you can't do this. This is not something that Unity does, but it absolutely does. Let's show you how. Let's just say that I'm over here in my morphs folder and I'm going to right click and create a scriptable object, scriptable child test. So I just created this and by default, it calls itself, I'm the parent. And now I'm gonna say, do something. And now look at this, it's got a down arrow. I'm the child. I'm the parent, I'm the child. I can do this a bunch of times. The point is, is that we can take one file and treat it like a package that holds on to all sorts of information and not just scriptables. This can be textures, this can be meshes. Uh, anything that counts as a Unity object. Before I show you the code for it, which is pretty sh straightforward, I'm gonna show you one more example, the use case of where I'm using this for. So I have this car here and I wanna create morphing tools for it so that I can start manipulating the object. But if I do this, I want to be able to save it and load it. If I save any morph changes back to the original mesh file, then it overwrites the original and I cannot undo that. So I'm going to select the car and I'm going to go up to Vigilante, make morph copy. And what this does is you can see it made a morph copy, but also it added this. It has the same name as the item it just produced up here. This is an exact copy of the original one over here. However, if I expand out body and I click on where this, where this filter came from, in this case, it came from cube, which is attached to the original FBX file. However, if I minimize this one, that original prefab, and I go to the body of the next one that I just produced and I click on cube and I wanna see where that goes to, that goes to the morph. So all of these items are draggable, droppable items. So I can have all of the individually named meshes, all of the individual textures, whatever I want, that all gets packaged together for a specific purpose inside of one source file. All right, so this is the first one that I showed. Inside of it is just a scriptable object called scriptable child test, and it has something in it, didn't matter, I didn't use it. And then I had a custom editor for it. Now you can see over here, I have the create asset menu. So we also say I'm the parent over here. That's where it got its original name. And then the next one, we're creating another scriptable child instance. We're gonna name it, I'm the child, and we're gonna use this command, asset database, add object to asset. And that does it, that adds it. And then of course, save the assets when I'm done. Okay, so now let's also show the other example, one where I'm taking other types of assets and adding them in there. We're going to instantiate a new copy of that mesh and attach it to the object asset. Now, if we took that original mesh and just saved it as a root element by itself, uh, that just generates another FBX file. Uh, I don't know if it does FBX all the time. Um, it does an FBX when it was a file that was an FBX file to begin with. Now we're going to take the shared mesh that that's the root mesh that that object is using. And we're gonna change it out with the one from our mesh reference. So it's actually the one that is now a child of our morph asset. And finally, we're gonna save the assets again. That's all it takes. Hope you found this useful.